Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have another Assassin's Creed Top 5 for you guys. And this is something that a few of you actually recommended in my last Top 5 video, which was Top 5 Robes in Assassin's Creed. But today we have Top 5 Antagonists, so it's not tied down to just Templar enemies. It's Antagonists as a whole. So, you know, just to keep it more open and there's a lot more characters in there that are better than just having it as Templar Antagonists. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into the video. So number five on this list is Bartholomew Roberts from Assassin's Creed 4. Now you guys are probably kind of surprised this guy's on the list because he's quite insignificant in terms of like the Assassin's Creed 4 as a whole, you know. He wasn't really that much of a main antagonist until towards the end and he's just kind of a character that's overlooked. But I thought he was a really, really interesting character. Now Bartholomew Roberts was a Welsh pirate and sage who raided ships in the Caribbean and on the West African coast between 1790 and 1722. He's regarded by many historians to be the most successful pirate of all time, judging by the number of ships taken and the amount of goods stolen. For his actions, he earned the moniker Black Bart, although the name was never used in his lifetime. His death is often considered to be when the golden age of piracy truly ended. I overall just thought it was quite an interesting character. He had quite a cool personality. You know, he was a sage. Sages can fuck off, but he was still an interesting character. He kind of started off as just a sage that the Templars were trying to capture. And he kind of, you know, spiraled into his own character when he got free. And it was really kind of cool to see him turn from quite an inconsequential character to, like, basically the main antagonist of the game. Because, let's be honest, the Templars did absolutely nothing in Assassin's Creed 4. There weren't really any Templars. There was just Torres and, like, a bunch of random guys that called themselves Templars. But overall, this guy, Bath me Roberts was the main antagonist of the game and I did really enjoy the parts where he was in the game you know where him and Edward were kind of like wandering throughout the observatory and he was talking about the fact that he was a sage and that he hadn't been there in 80 millennia it was just kind of cool he was a very interesting character and that's the reason why he's number five on this list because he's more interesting than the other ones like Crawford Starrick or random just shitty Templars in you know Assassin's Creed Syndicate or Unity he was just the best and the most interesting out of the relative relatively unimportant antagonists that have been in the different games. So number four on this list is Rodrigo Borgia. Now he was more of the antagonist in Assassin's Creed 2. He kind of took a step back in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and he's just one of the most iconic Templar antagonists of Assassin's Creed as a whole. In Assassin's Creed 2 he was really evil like during the fight with Ezio and Rodrigo Borgia. He was so fucking delusional and he was kind of losing it. It was his very last stand and he was so powerful. He was the Pope of Italy and it was just really really cool because he was genuinely a Templar antagonist whereas in the first game Amwalim wasn't really a Templar and wasn't really anything at all he was just an evil lad that had been corrupted by the apple. Rodrigo Borgia was definitely a really good villain for Assassin's Creed 2 and for the time period and he was just a really good villain to be going up against in Assassin's Creed 2 it was kind of Ezio's hatred for him you know spiraled throughout the game and at the end he forgave him which shows how Ezio was better than him and he was just generally a really really good villain in the game. Also, he was a historical character as well. Now, it's always better when Assassin's Creed has historical characters as one of the main antagonists, like in Assassin's Creed 1, when it was Roberto Saab, in Assassin's Creed 2, Rodrigo Borgia, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Cesare Borgia. It was always just so much more interesting instead of some random fucker called Crawford Starrick that comes along and doesn't even exist and he comes and ruins London. It's so fucking strange. It's always great to have the antagonist as a historical character so you can kind of show them in a different light to what they were like in real life and kind of change their character a little bit because I'm sure Rodrigo Borgia in real life wasn't as evil as he was in Assassin's Creed 2 so you know it's kind of cool to see a different take on all the historical figures in the Assassin's Creed game and you know Rodrigo Borgia was a great character in general and you can see the character development that he had from Assassin's Creed 2 to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and you don't really get an awful lot of character development in terms of the antagonists in games but in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood you can definitely see Rodrigo Borgia's character development and how after being defeated by Ezio, he was like, nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not for that, I'm alright, I'm just gonna take a step back and just be the Pope of Italy. So next up on the list of top 5 antagonists in Assassin's Creed is al Mualim from Assassin's Creed 1. Now you guys probably definitely expected al Mualim to come up at some point in this list. He's a really interesting antagonist because he wasn't just simply a Templar, he was the mentor of the Assassins in Assassin's Creed 1 and the Apple corrupted him, which is kind of like our first glimpse into like the power of the Apple of Eden and how it can corrupt people's minds in 
this series as a whole, but it was really cool. It's a really cool twist. The end of Assassin's Creed 1, you kind of get to the end. You'd be like, all right, we took out Robert de Saab. Everything's all right. And then you go to Masyaf and everything's fucked up. And it seems like Amwalim has completely taken the minds of everyone in Masyaf. And that was his goal all along. His goal was to take over the minds of everyone and become really powerful with the Apple of Eden. And it's just really interesting because throughout the game, there's like little parts where you can see when he's holding the apple up to Altair, he's trying to mind control him and stuff like that. And it's just like very subtle things that show you that he's not who he says he is and that he's not a good character in the game. And it's kind of never really said as to why he's so evil towards the end of the game. It's just up to the player to decide. Because what I originally thought when I was a kid is that he just went and turned into a Templar. But obviously that's not what fucking happened at all. It's the apple corrupting him and it definitely does show the power of the apple of Eden. And it's just a really cool way of doing things, you know? Instead of just going straight up, you know, kill Robert Saab and the game's done, they decide to take it that step further and have it so al Mualim becomes the antagonist and always has been the antagonist in a way because he sent Altair off on these escapades, killing all these different targets whilst he can study the apple and have no one to stop him when he does figure out how to mind control people. And it's just really, really interesting and I definitely have to have him on the list. So that's why he is at the number three spot. So at the number two spot of top five antagonists in Assassin's Creed is Cesare Borgia from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Now he is the second on the list because he is a really, really good villain and he suits Assassin's Creed Brotherhood perfectly. Unlike his father, Rodrigo Borgia, Cesare is young, he's relentless, and he still goes after Ezio after what happened to his father in Assassin's Creed 2. Like, Rodrigo is clearly afraid of Ezio and what the Assassin Brotherhood can do, but Cesare still goes after them and pursues them because he's reckless and relentless and ruthless and he's a really really awesome character like whereas other Templar enemies you kind of just be like yeah they're, they're just evil for the sake of being evil they're just kind of shit they don't really have a motive whereas Cesare you can see why he's doing what he's doing because he wants control over Rome and he wants the apple because he needs the apple to control the people of Rome and you know Ezio is just this thorn in his side and it really really angers him and you can see this as he progressively gets more and more agitated over the assassin's presence in the game and he is a really good character and I love the voice actor that plays him you know I love the final battle with Cesare it's definitely better than the final battle that Ezio has with Rodrigo Borgia because it's in more of like a war situation there's loads of cannonballs going off everywhere and it's definitely really really cool. I think Cesare and the Borgia family as a whole definitely suited the violent and extreme nature of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood as it felt a lot less tame than Assassin's Creed 2 because of the fact that Cesare was the main villain and Ezio kind of needed to match him in how ruthless he was but it was just really awesome you know he had such a high influence over Rome and Ezio broke it down bit by bit by getting the Borgia towers and recruiting people to the Assassin Order and I think it's really cool how you take him down you know for from just building the assassins up in Rome to, you know, finally defeating him in Vienna in the end of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So number one on this list of my top five antagonists in Assassin's Creed is Haytham Kenway from Assassin's Creed 3. Now Haytham isn't really an antagonist per se, he's more of just an anti-hero, but nevertheless he is a fucking amazing character and he can be considered an antagonist in many different ways. He is one of my favourite characters in the Assassin's Creed franchise as a whole because he's just so wise, so witty. I wish we had another game with him. If you guys read the book Forsaken, it's based around Haytham's life and it makes you love his character even more. He's such a great character and I really wish we would have had Forsaken made into a game because his character is just really, really good and it shows his whole life experiences all the way from when his father died to when, like, he dies in Assassin's Creed 3. It's really fucking good book. If you guys haven't read it, I recommend you read it because it is a really good book. But Haytham is an amazing character. There's so many scenes in Assassin's Creed 3 where you end up agreeing more with Haytham than you do with Connor because Connor is a bit of an idiot and Haytham a really intelligent and wise Templar and he's not really evil he's just on the side of the Templars because that's where he is you know by the time he found out his father was an assassin a renowned assassin Edward Kenway he was already too deep in the Templar order to even back out so he kind of just stuck with it and you can really see this in Assassin's Creed 3 because in Assassin's Creed 3 he knows that he's gonna die 
Like, he's going to let Connor win, and this is even evident in the book, where he literally, before the fight with Connor in New York, he knows he's going to die, and he knows that Connor needs to win so that there can be more good in the world, and so Desmond can find the key to the Grand Temple. And it's all just really cool. He's a really good character, and he's definitely one of my favorite characters in Assassin's Creed as a whole. But yeah, there's no, I'm not going to talk for much longer. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video of my top five antagonists in Assassin's Creed. I've been really enjoying making this video a lot of you guys asked for this and i hope you guys enjoyed it so be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe for more gaming news and content in the future and also remember to comment down in the comment section below telling me your guys's favorite antagonists in assassin's creed also guys i've just had a like another exam today so it's taken me a while to make this video and fucking hell if i can't do these daily uploads you guys know why i have exams it's taking up a lot of my time you know I, I was fucking exhausted today after it it takes up a lot of energy and brain power and shit like that so if i don't do daily uploads that's the reason why thank you guys for understanding and i will see you guys in the next one